Good morning. Welcome to church in Baldivis. Good to be here this morning. Spires Live Church. Yep, now it's a good time to move around, greet as many people as you can all around the building, one side or the other, from front to the back. Greeting in Jesus' name, right here at Spires Live Church. Please be seated, church. Take a seat. We have 22 partners to welcome this morning, and six of those are just writing themselves down. And if you did the partnership course back on the 13th of November, uh, and you signed up and got the certificate, you're the 22 I'm talking about. I want to get you all up. He said, come on up, we're all of you. Those wet ones, dry ones, all of you. Just 22 of you, just find your way up here somewhere. I'm going up a higher level. Uh, because there's 22 of you we need. Oh, you're one of them. Here's one. Unless you're already here. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Now, I know some of the people uh, that uh, said yes to partnership. Come up, Rick and Margaret. Yep. Uh, they have, have, can't be here today. Uh, got like weak excuses like they're in Singapore or like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's a whole bunch. Of, I'm going to read you the names shortly. Yeah, enough. just careful you don't fall in the baptistry. Uh, it's water's warm, but you probably don't want to. I just want to tell you something about partnership. Uh, many churches have a concept called membership. We have one called partnership. And uh, the people did this course, which is all contained in this little booklet here, on the 13th of, uh, of November. And they sign a covenant. It's like a pledge. And so they pledge some things uh, uh, in, in, in terms of being partners. And... It, I'm going to tell you what those things are. There are four of them. One is being a unifying church partner, acting in love towards other partners and so on. Number two, sharing the responsibility of my church, praying for its leaders and its growth and so on. Number three, being a functioning church partner by discovering my gifts and my talents. And I know some of them are just itching to do that and I'm going to talk about that in my message this morning. Uh, and number four... I will support the testimony of my church. So these people have signed uh, that, uh, that, that covenant, uh, and here they are, uh, to be driving forces in the life of this church, yeah? <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you all their names, and you figure they're not there, or I don't know who they are. I wonder which name that goes with. And because uh, some of them have, like, South African names, I'm, I'm just giving their first name because... I. I I can talk in tongues, but I don't want to do that right here, right now. And, and then anyone with South African heritage, you'll go, hey, you messed that up, all right? So I just won't say it. That's what I'm going to do. So here, here we go uh, from the top of my list. Mark Buckle, Liana, Liana, Liana. No, see, I'm stopping right there, Liana. She told me how to pronounce it, but I said I can't say that. Uh, There's Dan and Bree and uh, Claire. Is Claire here? Claire's out the back. See, there's a picnic later on, that's where Claire is, so when you find Claire, if you know her. There's Charlene, who's not here, she's way down south. Elizabeth Lang, who's down at Margaret River. Uh, Peter is here. Rick and Margaret are right over here. Yes, they are. Uh, Rachel is in Singapore. Uh, Keith and Susan McCrory are here, yeah. Uh, yep. uh, Jeffrey and Stacey Smith. Stacey's alive and well. She's been through the baptistry and she's come up. And I'm pleased, very pleased. I have no experience in midwifery at all. Uh, uh, Gabby Broomhead is here, right in front of me. Brianna Lee is here. What? They've all got something to say, haven't they? Even when I don't, even, I don't pronounce the names right. Uh, Emma Leopold is here, yes. Claudia Reynolds. Did Claudia come up? Yeah. Claudia's down there. She didn't made, made room. Wayne and Jeanette. Yeah. They have a name. <laughs> it's Wayne and Jeanette. And this is Tom. All right, give them a big round of applause before I pray for them. <laughs> Brown is here, I knew that. <laughs> Father in heaven, I want to thank you for these people being willing to step forward and to partner 
uh, with your work, with your cause, Lord Jesus Christ, the cause of Jesus Christ right here in and through the life of this church. Father, pour out your grace and your blessing on, on these partners who have uh, moved forward into partnership, but on everyone in this house this morning. Uh, Lord, I'm praying that the, the baptism service will have been a testimony to so many people here this morning. Uh, it'll be encouraging. And more than that, Lord, we're praying that all redound in glory to you, uh, both baptism and partnership this morning. Take these people and use them for your cause, Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray it in your name. Amen. Give them another big round of applause and make their way back. Or make their way this way. Mark. Off we go. On your feet, church. We've got a song to sing. So much to thank you for, Lord. So much to thank you for. We can count on you. You don't have to come, but you always do. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for all you're doing in our lives. Thank you all that you will do. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Great service, hey? Yeah. It's interesting because people have moved around today and people are normally sitting there or there and the people that often sit there are there. You always sit there. <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. One day Jesus asked his disciples who were almost saying that he was, you know, and they answered with a kind of a strange answer by saying some people thought that he was kind of like the reincarnation of some of the prophets, like Elijah or Jeremiah or some of the other prophets, and Jesus said, well, that's fine, that's what you've heard out there in the streets, but I want to make it personal. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Peter stepped up, and uh, I think the verse is going to be on your screen around about now as we talk about doing church together. Well, what about you, Jesus asked. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood. That is, you didn't get it on the streets from mankind, uh, but by my Father in heaven. You got yourself a revelation from heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or of hell will not overcome it or not prevail against it, some translations. Now, when Jesus says, I'm going to build uh, my church, my church, on this rock, uh, I need you to understand that the name Peter means stone. Like, not really a rock, but a stone. And the word that he used for the rock on which he will build his church is a huge rock, so that the Amplified Bible says it this way, might even be on your screen, a huge rock like Gibraltar. So what Jesus is saying, he's say, not saying I'm going to build my church on Peter. He's saying I'm going to build my church on the statement that Peter made, uh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I'm going to build my church on that. And Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell Stand in the way, will not prevail against his church. I, I love the church. I, I just love the church. Such a powerful force for good in, in this world, for fulfilling uh, God's purposes. And Jesus is building his church, but the wonderful thing is that anyone who commits their lives to him, uh, uh, to following him, he calls us to be fellow builders with him. I call that partnership. A partnership with God himself, with Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.9 on your screen. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. So we are fellow workers with God. This is just unreal when you think about it. Fellow builders with God as he builds his church. Uh, and, and the gates of hell will not prevail against this. Not going to stop us. Unstoppable. What a, what a privilege for all who gather as this church. We, we don't just come to church. We are the church, and we are fellow builders of the church. And, and, and since we welcomed in this morning 22 new partners, I, I just want to say to everyone here, 
whether you became a new partner or whether you're not a partner, whether you've been a partner for a long time, or whether you're just a visitor this morning, it, it's, it, it's such a privilege to partner with you. It really is. Let me give you a scripture. Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your what? Partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So, so partners, partners, we are working together to share the gospel as fellow builders with Christ and to take up the fight, the spiritual fight, not just up to the gates of hell, but they're not going to prevail against us. They're not going to stop us. We will knock them down if necessary to fulfill uh, the mission and the cause of Jesus Christ. And so partners together, uh, we have covenanted to go forward in the purposes of God. And together, we can do so much more. Together, together. As individuals, you can do a lot, just as random individual believers, but together. And, and this is the principle of synergy. And I just want to give you the principle of synergy. should be on your... There we go. Synergy, the interaction or cooperation of two or more... It should be of... Of two or more entities to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of the individual effects. And let me, let me just tease that out for you. Ten people, let's say ten people, we've got ten people, right? Ten good people, yeah? And they can achieve ten goals each, yeah? Uh, that would make that, uh, the combined sum of that, as individuals, a hundred, yeah? Yeah, yeah it's not too early in the morning for that, is it? Ten, ten to hundred, got that? Uh, that's what it is. But put in the synergistic effect, the partnership, the teamwork, the synergy teamwork, it's going to be far more than a hundred goals. It's going to make a hundred goals look like something minimal, you know. Levit Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 8 on your screen. Uh, five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. Now, if you use the first part of that little uh, uh, lesson there, five will chase a hundred and a hundred of you, if you're using that same uh, formula, a hundred will not chase 10,000 but 2,000. 100 will chase 2,000, there's no synergy, but bring in the synergistic effect and 100 chase 10,000. It just multiplies the thing exponentially. Uh, with no synergy, it's not a bad deal, but with synergy, so much more together, we can do so much more as partners. We're all in this together. Acts chapter 2, verse 44, says all the believers were, what? Together and had everything in common. I just want to tell you, uh, because I read the Greek of the New Testament, that the word together is actually four little words in the Greek, epito autokai. And what it means, not that they live together in commune, uh, you'd be going down the wrong track. It, it, epito autokai literally means they're all moving in the same direction. We would say they're all on the same page. There's not all these other individuals trying to, some are trying to do this thing for the church and some are trying to do that thing and they're all good things. They're all doing the same thing. It's all got the same purpose and point. All the believers were together in the cause of Christ and the mission of Christ. So by the time you get, that's verse 44, as we move down to verse 47 of that same chapter, the same to the early church, Acts 2, 47, says, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And I think about that because what were the people doing in that church? They were praising God. Well, it's hard not to when you sing songs like we were singing this morning, yeah? In the river, thank you. Don't you love the thank you song? It's hard not to sing it. You'll go out of here singing it. Praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. Which people? The people out there. And I've just got to tell you this. We're doing a picnic under the big tree, a big picnic under the big tree today. And I got all these message and messenger messages from the team. And they go, could you give me a, a letter of reference to the local butcher in Baldova Shopping Centre? He wants to give us meat and bacon and ham and stuff for our picnic. Would you think that's favour? So I quickly wrote the letter. I know that bloke. He calls me Gordon. I don't know how he knows I'm Gordon. He knows now who Gordon is, whether he didn't know that before. He does now. And I get another messenger message from the team, and they go, Woolworths. How many of you shop at Woolworths in Baldovas? Or anywhere, yeah? And some of you do. I occasionally go there when I'm going to the butcher, which is nearby. 
I used to go to Coles, but I think I'm going to Woolies now because Woolies, we have favour with Woolies in Baldavis. They go, fill your trolley up, fill your trolley up and come there and ask for Mitchell and, and we'll sign off on that for your church picnic. <laughs> You'd be looking for the biggest trolley now, wouldn't you? <laughs> and you would think, how much do I fit in that trolley? And when you get there, you know, all the expensive items in the trolley, they fill the trolley up for this church. I think we have favour with all people in the community. Yeah. I hope you're hearing me. So praising God, more water, Gordon, you're getting too excited. <laughs> praising God, my wife's not in here. She would say, if you got too excited this morning, Gordon, she's not here so I can get as excited as I like. Uh, <laughs> praising God, she's out there getting ready for the picnic. Praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And what happened? And the Lord added to their number. That's an interesting thing. See that word number, in, in the Greek, that's four little words. Epito autokai, and you heard them before because before they were translated together, but the translators this time translated them number. I want to say the Lord added to their togetherness, the whole group of togetherness, daily those who were being saved. So here's what happened. Uh, people out there said, they've got the favour of God on them. Look how they look after one another and look how they praise God. There's an integrity and a reality about how they praise God. We want to see what they got going because we want what they got. Yes. And they were drawn uh, to this fellowship like moths to a bright light on a hot summer's night. And when they came to the light, they found that the light was Jesus. And they joined in with the light through the people. And they had a togetherness with the people who were already there. That's how God grows his church, praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord adds to their number daily those who are being saved. When we do church together in a way that is mutually edifying and uh, reaching out to bless others, uh, the first thing that is so helpful to this end is partnership, and we've just talked about that. The second thing that is so needful is putting down roots. I just got to tell you, on uh, Thursday night, we had an Alpha program here, not, not for our church. It was Alpha asked if they could kind of hire our facility, and they told me there would probably be 12 to 15 people come, and we looked at where, which room we would have it in, whether it be the cafe, whether it be in here, for 15 people in here, that's kind of, it'd be lost. So we decided we're doing the foyer because we've done meetings in there before. And so the guy set up and he put a screen, the other side there's double doors. And when you do that, you've got to put a table this side of the double doors. You don't want someone to come run through the double doors and knock on your screen over or you, the speaker. And we set up probably 20 chairs being, you know, on, we want to lay, go on the side of more than what we thought. 30 people turned up from six or seven different churches. Not our church, it wasn't for us. I was here to be the host, that, that was it. We had 30 people in our cafe Thursday night uh, having tea and coffee and, 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 and raisin toast and cake, and they, they weren't our people. They were from six or seven other churches. Well, we set up the 30-odd chairs in the foyer, and a lady that I, got, I met there, I, I did all the greeting. I'd, I'd love to do this because I stood up and I go, guys, this is what I do on Sundays. Welcome to church in the Baldivis heartland. Now, I know you're going to like us before you go, but please don't stay because we're not going there. We want you to go back to your own church and be blessed and do the Alpha thing. Well, this lady came to me and said, I'm a brand new Christian in my church, church in Mandurah. All different denominations, by the way. It was pretty cool. And she said, I see this sign on your wall there. And if you haven't checked the sign out, we've got the screen on the wall when you go out those doors. And then that way you've got a, a sign. It's, it's a psalm, Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14, planted in the house of the Lord. You'll flourish in the courts of our God. She said, I'm brand new. I've never seen that verse. I said, isn't it cool? She said, so planted. She said, I've seen so many people in our church. She said, they, they go through all the churches. They try a bit here. They go to the next church because they're not happy. They take a fence there. They go there. They move on there and they move there. And they come back and they move on. And it's like musical churches. I go, well, this speaks against that. God talks about being planted, you see. And she said, I, I really, I'm going back to my church and tell them, you've got to get planted. I just want to tell you that, you see. Uh, you need to put down roots. Uh, 1 Corinthians, back to the other one, thanks, Mark. We got ahead there, didn't we? Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But now God has set the members, set them, each of them, in the body just as he please. God puts you where he wants you. It's not up to you. You need to seek the face of God. 
when it comes to which local church you should be part of, it's best to get God's mind on this. Sometimes God moves people and that's his business, but don't you go doing that without him. He has set the members where he pleases. God is on about planting people in a particular local church faith community. And where he sets and plants, uh, that's where we're best off putting down deep roots regardless of how we might feel on any given day because sometimes we don't feel so charitable towards our fellow partners in this local church. Hey, I knew no one would smile and I knew that you all looked at me. I'm going to be a poker player, it's not me. It's all of us from time to time. That's just the way we are. But it doesn't matter how you feel, if God has set you and planted you, that's where we're best off putting down deep roots. Back to Psalm 92. Uh, here we go. Psalm 92. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. Planted. They will flourish in the courts of our God. You won't flourish unless you're planted. Can't go skipping all over. They will still bear fruit in old age and they will stay fresh and green. And I like one translation that says fat and green. And it's kind of Shrekish, you know, just like Shrek. And, and you can get old as you will. But if you're planted, you're going to flourish. We've moved a bit. In our house over the years, we used to live in Safety Bay and we had some pot plants. And when we built our first house in Baldivis, we rented in Shoalwater and moved our pot plants to Shoalwater. Then we moved to Arpenshaw Drive in Settlers Hills and we took our pot plants and put them there. Then we moved to Hoskin Way in Settlers and took our pot plants and moved them there. Then we moved to where we are now where we're never moving from ever again and, uh, and in, in Highbury Park and we got the pot plants. Now, some of those pot plants, we, we got two citrus trees and they're about that big. If we'd stuck them in the ground somewhere, they'd be huge. Every now and again they get an orange or a lemon on them, you know, and, and that, that's it because in pot plants, God doesn't want you to be a pot plant. He doesn't want you to despair an orange or a lemon every now and again he wants you to flourish and you flourish when you put down roots don't be a pot plant christian there you drift around all over the joint this is about putting down deep roots and so if that's what we're to do how are we to do that we'll resolve not to be drifting even on bad days when people irritate you as they might do uh, stick with the spiritual house where he's put you. Resolve to be part of the cooperative, synergistic effort of teamwork in the one house. Pastor Lee uh, preached, I don't know, three or four Sunday nights ago, and he used this verse, which has really taken my fancy, and anyone that heard it, it's taken their fancy. It's Micah chapter 7, verse 7, and I hope it's on your screen around about now. And it says, I'm sticking around to see what God will do. Is that, you found that one? Micah 7, there. I'm sticking around to see what God will do. He goes, sometimes there are lean times in our local church. And you go, yeah, I'm going from here. Things aren't working out. I'm sticking around to see what God will do. And he's about to do something. So stick around and see what he will do. So put down deep roots. It's talking about stickability and perseverance and reliability. Uh, when you have the partnership thing and the putting down roots thing, uh, you're in a position to pull together you know, the cause of, in the cause of Christ. Partnership, putting down roots, pulling together. Uh, Jesus is building his church and in order to overcome the powers of darkness and evil he, he wants this team, this partnership and he's asked his followers, f followers to be fellow builders with him so that nothing will stop his church and his cause. It's the cause of Christ. Uh, Jesus was on trial before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor just prior to his crucifixion and uh, one of the Jewish charges against Jesus that he it was that he was a self-proclaimed King and uh, so Pilate, John chapter 18, verse 37, uh, says this Pilate therefore said to him, are you, are you a king then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. You, you say, Yeah, you got that right. Yep, I am. Uh, for this cause I was born, the cause of Christ, the king and his kingdom. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. I, 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 this is what I think. Many people on planet Earth want to belong to a cause. And some people have made it their business to belong to loopy causes, yeah? <laughs> Terrorist causes, odd causes. How about the cause of Christ? It'll change your life and give you meaning and fulfillment like never before. For this cause I was born. When you become a follower of Christ, 
You become a fellow builder with him in his church. You have aligned yourself with the cause of Christ. And truly, there is no greater cause to belong to than the cause of Christ. Aligning yourself with the cause of Christ, you are becoming some, part of something that's far bigger than yourself. Because synergy kicks in. With, with, and I think of this. I think of the people in this church, partners, and, and synergy. Uh, you see, right now, as many people as are in this building are in the other building. They're doing kids' church and nursery. And you say, is that, is that the cause? Yes, that's the cause. Some of those kids will never forget what they learn. They'll remember forever, and they'll remember with fondness. You say, all I did this morning was on the door, cause of Christ. Because when you're on the door, uh, the, the newcomer, first, they first come. Who are they going to see first? You at the door. They come and they go, and you're, you're there with misery on your face. They're not coming in. They go, I'll come this once because I'm here. I'll never come back. You're there and you're going, hi, welcome to the house of the Lord. Come on in. You've got kids, we can help you get them over to kids' church or nursery. And they go, wow, I love this church. I'm coming back. You're part of the cause of Christ. There are people here that do, do logistics. They make sure the air, condi air conditioning is just right, uh, that no terrorists move in, that your cars aren't getting thieved while you're in here. They do all those kind of things. You want to make sure the table is set up out there for coffee later on. Uh, part of the cause of Christ. Later on this morning, when you leave here, you can go get raisin toast in the, in the cafe. No sausage sizzle today because we've got a big picnic instead. Uh, but the raisin toast is still there. And, you, and, and, and just help yourself there. But when you go up to get your coffee from Mr. Barista, there's another experience. You go, wow, he seems to be happy with doing coffee. I've never seen such a happy barista. And you go, I think I'll come back here. I don't like coffee all that much, but he made it so happy. I'm just going to get the coffee in spite of the fact that I don't really like coffee and caffeine. And you'll come back again and again. Yeah? And that, that's the cause of Christ, Mr. Barista. And, and right now he's making me laugh because... He's just told his wife some joke and, and, uh, about being a barista. And, and she actually laughed back at him, and she often doesn't do that because she's heard all these jokes before. <laughs> so that was a good one. Whatever it was, mate, please save that one. I want to hear it. Yeah. I think about this. A part, all that we do in the life of the church is about the partnership. We can do it with synergy because we're all doing it for the same reason, for the cause of Christ. And when you truly become part of the cause of Christ... Uh, listen, listen, sorry, Russell Crowe, sorry, Gladiator. What you do now echoes in eternity. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem where he would be crucified and, and so he expressed his sorrow about this as you would uh, to his disciples uh, at the coming crucifixion. John 12, 27, in your New King James. For this cause... He said, you know, I could talk to the Father and say, I'm not doing it because I don't want to do it. But for this cause, I have come to this hour. For the cause of Christ. So this morning, partners, members, friends, visitors, all in the house today, uh, such a privilege. We have the opportunity to partner together, to put down deep roots together, to pull together for the cause of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For the love of Christ leaves me no choice. And I'm thinking about the partnership covenant and thinking about synergy and thinking about the teamwork. And, you know, I, I have spiritual gifts. Uh, but you have spiritual gifts. And the spiritual gifts you have are different than the ones that I have. There's a whole lot of spiritual gifts. And within a local church, we'll cover them all, but no one person's got them all. When we work together for the same cause, uh, going in the same direction... We can use our spiritual gifts. Some of you say, I don't know what mine are. Oh, you don't. You don't. Well, here's the way to find out. Number one, have a shot at something. If that resonates with you and someone says, man, you're good at that, that's probably it. Here's another way. Do the shape class. I want to talk to you about the shape class. And I want to give you the acronym here this morning, S-H-A-P-E. S is for spiritual gifts. H is for heart. Your heart beats for something or other that somebody else's doesn't, you know. A is for abilities, P is for personality. You're different than everyone else. When God made you, he threw away the mold and said one of them's enough because uh, we're all different, uh, we're all unique. Uh, uh, P, personality. E is for experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. They'll make you what you are today. And I'm doing this class in February. Now, here's the thing. Here's what's going down. As of next Sunday, we're, we're in the Christmas theme, Born is the King. I'm looking so, I'm so excited. And that's going to take up our, our heart space and our head space. And we're going to do Christmas. 
And in January, I'm doing a, a new theme, and it's called Finding Gold. Finding Gold. Uh, you are so valuable to, goal, uh, to God, and more valuable than gold, but I'm using gold to kind of signify that. And, and within you, there's something of value that you offer to the kingdom of God and the cause of Christ. In January, we're going to be talking about that, and, and uh, some of you don't think that you're valuable at all. We're going to be talking about you are valuable, but there's something of value in you that needs to be mined, needs to be found, be unearthed and brought to the surface. And talk about that in January, and that'll lead up to in February doing the shape class. And some of you go, oh, that was the gold. I didn't know that was me. And you'll be amazed, and you'll be putting that into practice. I want to finish with this verse this morning, Ephesians 3.20. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the icing on the cake. Now to him, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, that is at work within us. To him be glory. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Your NIV says immeasurably more. I like the New King James Bible. It says exceedingly, abundantly, above all. And what that's saying is, I wonder what your dreams and visions and ideas are your prayers to God for something that you can do, that you can become, I, that the church can do. And be, I wonder what your dreams, visions, goals, prayers are. And God is saying through that, whatever they are, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask. Bowl up your biggest prayer, he says, and I will beat that. So he said, just try me, put it out there. I wonder what it is. Give it a shot. Bowl up your biggest prayer. And in partnership, in partnership, when you find out who you are, who you truly are in Jesus Christ, uh, then, then what's the synergistic outcome? You're, you're not alone. We're doing all this together as a team. Put down deep roots and watch the fruitfulness multiply in your life, in your business and in your ministry and in your own life. Pull together with God's people for the cause of Christ and see how he will use you in a way that blesses you and blesses all the people around you in Christ Jesus. Father God, I, I thank you that you call us to partner with our fellow believers in one local church. Father, as we leave here today, the cry of our mission statement rings in my ears, showing people all they can become in Christ. Father, in the days ahead, show us what we can become. And Father, we want to reach out to seize what you're showing us. We want to pray to you about that so that your Holy Spirit will come alongside us, empower us to do what you're calling us to do. Thank you for everyone in the house. Father, thank you for celebration today and thank you for ongoing celebration for those who are staying for the picnic. But prior to that, Lord, I, I'm praying that there will be connections made in our cafe for those who, who aren't even going to the picnic as they have coffee and raisin toast and hang about and talk to one another. And so, Father, I commend every person in this house to you this morning and to your grace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's stand, church. Got a song to sing. Hey, if you're needing ministry or prayer this morning, as we sing that song, make your way down the front this morning and we will pray for you. Let's sing it out to God this morning. Father God, thank you so much for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that the resurrected King, the King and his cause, you're resurrecting us, giving us new life, new life, life eternal, life to live life to the full while we're here on planet Earth and life eternal. Father, for those who are struggling with issues, anyone in this house right now, I'm praying for a visit of your Holy Spirit to bring his grace and his healing his direction and his wisdom. Pour it out, pour it out, Father God, and I ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. Just a few things before you move, people. Yeah, we've got a big picnic under the big tree today. And if you're staying for that, I'm sure you'll find out exactly where to get your food from in due course. And uh, meanwhile, those who are not going, or even those who are, Raisin Toast is there, coffee's there in the cafe. Uh, those of you who got baptised, if you didn't get your certificate yet, 
Come and see Catherine. That's Catherine right there. And she will have your certificate for you. And uh, be blessed. No, no, no night church tonight, by the way. No night church. Uh, big day today. So, and tonight there'll be a few people in here setting this place up for Christmas. So when you come back next Sunday morning, it's going to look like Christmas. Born is the king is the theme. And if you haven't set up your house yet, yeah, you're not coming to church tonight because there isn't one here. Set your own house up tonight. Yeah, start on it. Yeah, yeah. No service here tonight. I don't know what you're saying behind me, but set your house up. Get into Christmas. Get into the mood of Christmas if you're not there yet, all right? Be blessed. Have a fantastic day. See you at the picnic or see you next Sunday.